Hey guys, welcome to another video. Something that I'm noticing as we start the year 2020 is that a lot of us are focused on our mental health and just like self-care in general. And one area which is often overlooked and it's a very subconscious influence on how we're feeling day to day is our surroundings. So in this video, I wanna show you guys how to make more uplifting art for your apartment. I don't know if you're like me, but a lot of the apartments that I end up in are of just like really sad and depressing beige walls. And it took me a long time to figure out that I can actually put my own paintings up, like, duh. But look around, I still have a lot of space that has nothing. And when I actually do have paintings up, they usually tend to be very moody, angsty. And so in today's video, like I said, I want to make more uplifting paintings and I want to start exploring more like beige tones, but like pretty beige tones. So let's get started. Have you noticed how different colors tend to be associated with different emotions? Like, you know, you have the very cliche black is associated with emotions that are very negative and, you know, depressing, maybe even like anger and isolation. And then you have colors like red, which are, you know, associated with love. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is you want to figure out which colors want to bring you to the kind of feelings you want to have. I noticed that a lot of my paintings have green and purple, so I wanted to use a more pink and beige tones just to like change things up a bit. What happened was last summer I went to the Getty Museum and it was, even though I've lived in the US for 18 years now, i would never actually been to the Getty Museum and entrance is free and everything. So I just happened to go with my friend who was visiting from New York and it was so beautiful up there because all the buildings are made of beige I don't know if it's actual marble but they're like beige stones and the museum is at the top of the hill so when you're up there you can't really like help but notice how blue the sky is and it's not that the sky is any different up there is that all the beige buildings make that blue so much more powerful and such a more calming effect than the blue sky has any other time that I've looked at it. I don't know why that's so weird, but I kind of wanted to get that feeling going in my own paintings. So that's why I decided to kind of experiment with more beige colors, which in the past I really thought they were ugly until I had that moment at the Getty Museum. So I just started with some 5x5 canvases from Blick Art Supply. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I don't claim that these are the greatest materials ever used. Well, first of all, it's the closest art supply store to me, like within my routine. And because thankfully my cousin Carlos, shout out to Carlos, gave me a gift card for Christmas. So I went and got a bunch of supplies. And these were just the canvases that I've happened to, to get. So first I put some beige down just because I wanted to see what the color was going to look like next to the colors that I was going to use. And I know it looks, I know the colors on my palette look really weird, but I discovered that there is no like one way to make a beige color. You just have to mix white, burnt umber, blue, yellow, and red. And just figure out what kind of combination of those you end up liking. So I ended up with two versions of beige. One that had more blue and one that had a lot more yellow and red. I've been thinking about making these type of paintings for a while, so I already had it in my head that I wanted to try out on one canvas to have like a almost like a stain effect, like just put really watery paint as the first layer on the canvas. And then on top of that, put really like chunky and thick gray, uh, beige paint. And on the other hand, I knew I wanted to have a second canvas to do the exact opposite. What if you put the beige thick material on? Um, what if you put the thick beige paint at the bottom, you know, as the first layer on the other canvas? What does that look like? And then you put like more bright colors on top of that. And the reason why these two canvases don't exactly match is because I don't like that whole like trend of you know you put two canvases together and then you paint one painting but then you separate them and there's like i don't know like negative space between the paintings just the fact that i can tell you that 
process and you kind of already know what I'm talking about is the reason why I didn't do it. I think it's kind of played out. And people have actually come up to me and asked me to do commissions on that style and like, I will not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I don't like things that are like, when something's like, I don't know, I just rather be more original and like, I really like how two different paintings that don't go together they somehow go together next to each other if you can figure out the right colors next to one another so that's why I decided to make two completely different paintings on this video of course you can do the whole like put them together and then separate them later but for me it's just not what I prefer and so that's why I went about it this way now I knew that for making this video I wanted to work very quickly and not get too invested on the outcome because I noticed that especially when I have like a canvas in front of me for some reason I get really worked up about how it has to be a good painting and and I just want to have fun I noticed that when I make something like really simple and I don't pay too much attention to the outcome it actually comes out looking much more pretty than the paintings that like I just keep going and going and going and going and going so I knew that for this video I just want to make something really simple and so I started with really big brush strokes and then something I've started doing more recently is trying to use smaller brushes a little bit more to put more details or just to like emphasize areas that I really like because that's something that I never did before in the past I've only ever used like big brushes like multiple big brushes at a time and yeah like I said I just have been ex experimenting a little bit more been trying to grow as an artist yeah I don't usually like plan much of my paintings like this is why I like painting abstract art because I'm not very good with planning <laughs> my brain doesn't work that way the people that like draw like realistic things like I really admire them because their brain works in a way that doesn't work for me. For me, painting is all about just being in the moment and kind of like feeling, listening to your intuition and just kind of seeing where you think the color should go. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm not very good at like planning and I've never really like sketched my paintings in advance. I just kind of let it happen. And yeah, so that's what I wanted to do with this video. I want to get a lot more comfortable painting on camera because my past videos have actually been really hard to make when I paint on camera because I feel like under pressure. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I gave myself the challenge of just making really simple paintings for this video. So like I said, I intentionally wanted the second painting to be different, so I started with a much bigger brush than I did the first one. And because the other painting ended up being a little bit, um, have ended up having a little bit of detail in it, I made sure to just be really simple with this one. And I just really wanted to just make like a big gesture on the canvas. I don't know, I just felt like I just wanted to make a big gesture on the canvas to again just try something different and try to do something very simple but like more intentionally So I actually can't believe I 
pushed myself to be using colors like beige because I hate those colors but it actually looks really pretty and I think it makes the other colors stand out once these paintings dry I'm actually gonna hang them over my TV area because that's a really prominent area of my studio and I feel like it's like I said it's just been really boring and blah without nothing on my wall so let me know what you guys think about these two paintings I kind of switched up putting the beige as the background in one and the beige on top of the colors as the, um, on the other one thank you for watching if you still are subscribe if you like to continue talking about art and world domination I'm actually really happy with how they worked out let me know how it goes with you making art that gives you an uplifting feeling around your home and of course remember this is in no way a substitution for like you know therapy with a doctor or medicine if you need it but i think it's just a very easy and subtle way to remind yourself of good feelings and more positive energy and yeah let me know how it goes for you at home thank you for watching if you still are like i said i'll see you in the next one